Hi, my name is Matthew Jakob, and today we're going to talk about Versa Concerto orchestration platform. So this is the view that any new user or new tenant will see on their screen when they log into the Concerto system. Concerto allows you to configure remote access, such as Secure Service Edge, and also allows you to configure SD-WAN. So it's a single unified platform for both SASE and SD-WAN. The very first thing that system will propose you to do is to create an integration with the authentication provider of your choice. It can be LDAP, for example, in the LDAP we can go and configure Active Directory or type or maybe it's going to be open LDAP, whether it's going to be with the SSL or without SSL, you can add your certificates and others. If you want, of course, you can select other type of authentication such as SAML and in this case it can be Okta, Ping ID, Office 365, Azure and others which you would need to configure. And of course it can be integrated versus a directory, meaning that it's going to be a local authentication uh, database which is created on the Versa cloud. If we will choose, for example, LDAP and integration with Active Directory. So first we'll need to provide the, the name, domain name. Uh, it will ask for the port which we want to use for connection to that domain name of the server. Uh, we might want to enable SSL or not enable, bind DN. Uh, um, bind password, let's give some passwords. Um, base DN, domain name versa.com and domain base versa. Okay, so next it will ask us how to call different object class group name and group members which we want to add, we want to use in combination with the LDAP. So let's give it just group, group members, objects and Matthew as the username. And of course, how do we call this connector for authentication? Maybe we want to call it LDAP1 or somehow else, because you might have multiple connectors, such as connectors to the uh, uh, to the LDP connectors, to the uh, SAML and others, and you can use them, uh, for example, for different users, different types of authentication or with the failover from one to another. So after we created the authentication, the next thing system will offer us to create the very first security rule. The very first security rule can be based on the applications. It can be based on the users for which we want to uh, allow or deny access somewhere. It can be based on the geographical location. It can be based on the source destination port, source destination zone, uh, certain service, or we can customize when this rule should be active. Maybe it should be active only during the work hours and that's it. And of course, the last is what is going to be the rule for the traffic for the uh, applications, users and uh, everything else that we um, selected before. You can either allow it by default, you can deny that all, or you can apply certain security profiles. In the security profiles, we have a choice of uh, malware protection, we have the URL filtering, we have IPS IDS, we have the IP filtering capabilities, file filtering and DNS filtration capabilities all in one place. Of course, you can choose which of the profiles or predefined profiles you want to use or you can create your own profiles later on. Uh, in each of them, we have predefined categories. For example, in the malware protection, you can specify to scan all email traffic or all web traffic or maybe all traffic uh, completely needs to be scanned and we can enable or disable. In the URL filtering, we have a lot of predefined profiles and some of these profiles, of course, can be uh, modified uh, later if you would want to do this. So the same is going to be for the IPS IDS. Uh, so I think the main concept is understandable. Anyway, at the end system will ask us uh, what is the name of this rule, whether uh, it's a default rule or some other, and we'll click OK. So now we finished the initial configuration wizard and we have a default rule which is saying that all the traffic which is going through the system from the clients should be protected and should be protected from the malware protection, file filtering, URL filtering um, and so on and so forth. If we want to add more specific rules, we can always do this. So let's say that we want to create a rule for the box application and for the box application uh, Security enforcement is yes, all the box should be rejected. And we say box reject. 
and we want to put it as the very first rule to be checked before the rule that we created uh, uh, as the default. So, or maybe you want to add some additional rules which will be created based on the applications where you can select from the uh, almost 3,800 applications that we support or maybe certain application category. Maybe you want to say that uh, so software updates or maybe voice over IP traffic, uh, we don't want to do any kind of verification and for this traffic we just want to allow it silently and that's it. So and this is going to be a voice allow. Once again, add it as the very first rule in the system. So now we have a rules which will be checked from the top till uh, to down, meaning that first the system will check for the voice. If it's a voice traffic, it's going to be just silently allowed. If it's going to be anything box related, it's going to be silently dropped. If it's anything else, it will be protected with these mechanisms in the system. So those are the basic rules which are created for the Internet Protection or SWG. You can have your own rules for the uh, connectivity uh, to the private network of the customer. So first of all, you can establish side-to-side -side tunnel. And for this, we also have a configuration wizard. In this side-to-side -side tunnel, you can choose whether you want to use IPsec or GRE. From which of the gateways which are available for to you, you want to establish this tunnel. Right now, on this demo system, I have only one uh, VersaCloud gateway available for this tenant. But in the real life, depending on the license that your users will purchase, you can select uh, or have up to 100 different gateways and you just want to select from which of them you want to establish this uh, secure tunnel. So let's say it's going to be from this one. We're saying to which IP address it's going to be connecting. So I'm just using a dummy to show you the interface. Uh, you will select what type of the authentication uh, of IPsec transform, what type of the authentication, whether it's a certificate authentication or pre-shared key authentication. And of course, you'd be able to add the um, the basic IP addresses which needs to be pointing to that uh, tunnel. So, for example, we know that uh, in your network you have 10.0.0.16 and that's your internal network which should be available through that protocol. Of course, uh, instead of this, you can run eBGP to receive and advertise routes from the Versa Cloud Gateway and back. And of course, you can select into which of the customer refs it's going to be working. So after this all is going to be done, the next thing system will offer you to also create the rules similarly to how we have for the SWG, but in this case, they are going to be applicable exclusively to the users which are using uh, the private uh, connection to their systems. There are a lot of different settings in the system, such as profiles for the clients where you can specify which routes are going to be advertised uh, to the user or which applications should be going through the secure tunnels and which shouldn't go there. Uh, you can specify TLS decryption where you can define which rules or which applications should be decrypted. For example, you can say you want to decrypt all the traffic except uh, medical traffic and banking transactions from your users and it can be created in this menu. So, and lastly, there are different settings which we created through the wizard but which are going to be available in here. For example, uh, as you remember, we created LDAP profile. That's where this profile is located and that's where it can be modified later. Similarly, any certificates which were uploaded previously by users or by you for SSL decryption or maybe for the authentication with LDAP are going to be the certificate section. Side-to-side -side tunnels are going to be in the side-to-side -side. and of course integration with the mobile device management is going to be at the bottom with the um, um, in the system, um, which will allow you to integrate with the Microsoft Intune, for example. So second section is the configuration for the secure SD-WAN. The secure SD-WAN connection allows you to have, first of all, basic profiles, which can be cloned, modified and uh, uh, assigned to the future devices. For example, in this default basic master profile, we want we can specify what is going to be the path, uh, the solution here which we will apply to the devices which will have this profile and later system will ask us what should be the WAN interfaces on this specific device how many of those interfaces are going to be so we can click for example on interfaces and either uh, modify any of these connections. For example, this is our internet connection. Uh, we will say that it's connected to the internet and we can either uh, receive IP addresses through the DHCP or we can create a static configuration by just creating certain variable. Now let's say IP1 for this and certain 
next hop for the next hop. And we can also create static routes on this specific interface. Uh, we can create uh, different types of routing protocol, which is going to be um, peering through this interface with the external devices and so on. So this can be modified for the internet, for the private connections. You can add more connections. You can uh, specify whether this connection should be used as the VPN only, or maybe it should be used as the split tunnel to provide the DIA capabilities and DIA access for the users simultaneously with the SDN. And similarly, you can configure LAN services and Wi-Fi services on the top. For example, on the LAN, you can either add new interfaces or you can modify existing interfaces by specifying, first of all, where they're going to be connecting, uh, what is going to be the IP address assigned to this interface, whether it's going to be a static IP address or maybe you want to receive it through the DHCP or which routing protocol should be uh, running on that interface. And of course, certain QoS configuration, which is going to be applicable to this interface um, on the system. In the Wi-Fi networks, we have predefined networks or you can create the new one. In the predefined networks, of course, here's the SSID, which is going to be translated, um, uh, broadcasted from this uh, device. Uh, here is the password, which needs to be set. In the advanced settings, we will have the information about the protocol and encryption, which is used. Uh, and of course, the passphrase to connect to this specific um, uh, Wi-Fi connection on the system. Later on, we will have capability of the security configuration. In the security configuration, we have sections separately for the URL filtering, IPS, IDS, or we can create access control chain rules. What I mean by the access control chain rules, if I'm going to go in here and, for example, I want to add a new rule. So let's say it's going to be rule one. And in this rule, we can add a criteria based on the source, destination, IP address, zone, address group, site, and so on and so forth. So you can select application, services, URL category, and so on. And let's say that this is a rule for our Facebook applications. And we want to make sure that they either deny it or maybe they are chained to the uh, to be checked by the antivirus or maybe by the IPS system where we can define what is going to be the uh, profile or maybe we want to service chain it to the IP filtering uh, to make sure that uh, we are blocking all the connections uh, for the spam and others and so on and so forth and we can save this rule and it's going to be available for us to use. So and that's it. So later, after we finished our security configurations, uh, we can go next and we can configure QoS and traffic steering. In the traffic steering, uh, you can create rules based on, uh, let's say it's uh, rule one traffic steering. And in this rule, first, we can create match criteria. If we don't select anything, it's going to be applicable to all the traffic which is going through the system. Or we can select that it's only for specific services. Let's say that this is for service HTTP only. And we want to say that all the HTTP traffic should be going uh, through the internet circuit. And it also should be uh, using let's say, standard uh, protection mechanism that we want to enable for their correction if SLA is violated. Or we can select moderate that for their correction and replication needs to be enabled when the SLA is violated. Or maybe we want to always enable aggressive for direction, uh, error correction and replication for all the devices, um, for all the HTTP traffic, which is going to be going there. So anyway, that's how to create the sd one traffic steering rules. So after that, system will allow you to configure DHCP configuration, CGNet configuration, your VPNs. Like for example, right now we have enterprise VPN and we can select what is going to be the topology, whether it's going to be a full mesh or it's spoke to hub only or spoke to spoke via hub, or maybe it's going to be a hub device and what is the VRF which is used in this system. So uh, in this case, I have only one VRF, but I can add more later and, uh, and configure which of them should be uh, configurable in the system and uh, available to access SD-WAN. And of course, in here, you can have a little more granular control over where the users needs to go to the internet through which of the circuits. So I can say that, for example, through the internet, I want to go to the internet with the direct internet access. But if I would have more circuits, internet two, three, four from other providers, I would be able to select which of them should be used for the internet access, or maybe we want to do the load balancing with the system. 
So, of course, uh, we have other configurations such as BGP advanced configuration management services and so on and so forth. And after we uh, created the uh, configuration profile, we can begin deploying the site and, and we can either add a new site or apply it to the existing file and existing device uh, where we already have certain profile. For example, we can add the new appliance and say that this appliance is called branch. Uh, Cleveland. This branch Cleveland uh, has this model. It has the serial number GAB123456.7. It's going to be connected to this controller. Here's the bandwidth and the profile which we want to apply is the profile which we just created. After this, you just save configuration and we're good to go to onboard this device. Of course, we have monitoring capabilities, uh, analytics capabilities. Analytics looks exactly like Versa Director, but just through the uh, uh, through the concerto screen. We have the inventory of all the devices that are controllable from us. We have the users which we can create specifically for this tenant, uh, which should be able to manage the system. And we have a global settings for the IPsec, which is going to be used between the SD-WAN uh, devices in the system. So this finalizes our uh, small demo. I hope this was informative for you and thank you for watching.